just a few words about the service today. It's a flower communion. And you'll find out more as the service goes on. But it's important that each of you has chosen a flower. Because I'll be asking you to do something with it. So, the opening words are a poem by Albert Leighton. Flowers. They are autographs of angels, penned in nature's green-leaved book. And blended tints borrowed from rainbows in the sunset skies, and written everywhere on plain and hill, in lonely dells, mid crowded haunts of men, on the broad prairies where no eye save God's is, save God's may read their silent sacred mysteries. Thank God for flowers, they gladden human hearts, seraphic breathings part their fragrant lips with whisperings of heaven. We light this chalice in remembrance of those who laid down the foundation of our communities in the spirit of freedom, love and tolerance to remember that true light will outshine darkness. And there is a prayer by Francis David who founded the Hungarian Unitarian Church in the 16th century. Faith is the gift of God. The true signs of faith are an inner purity and love and an honest life and good deeds. Love is the ultimate interpretation and completion of the law. According to Jesus, love is the plenitude of the law. Love is the royal commandment. Love is the true freedom which does not bear the bondage of fear. Love is the creative spirit of the world, the highest treasure of humankind. Could you please now say with me the words of our covenant? Love is the doctrine of this church, the quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humankind in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony. Thus do we covenant with each other and with our God. So now we're going to have, Jamie's going to play some music from Finlandia by John Sibelius. And while the music is playing, would each of you please come forward and place your flower with the others in the vase over there. That's on your right. Um, and then go back to your seat. And if you can, stay silent while this is happening. So we should have a lovely assortment of flowers in that vase by the time we've finished. So, I have an anonymous reading. I'm not quite sure where this one came from. The friendship we share today is sacred. All gatherings when people meet and touch celebrate life. The laughter we share today is sacred. Joy and sorrow that rise from love are springs of life. The stillness we share today is sacred. In this silence is a haven for the spirit that nurtures life. So I'm going to read a talk by John Midgley um, from a flower communion that he'd done. Well, he did a lot. He's an English Unitarian minister. Um, sometimes it's good to remember that our tradition started, this, this church's tradition started from the English church. So, okay. When in 1938 Hitler's armies invaded the country then known as Czechoslovakia, and throughout the years of the 1938 to 45 war, terrible suffering was inflicted upon the ministers and people of all the churches in that country. The Czech National Church had a liberal Hussite tradition, and among the other denominations were the Unitarians, whose church in Prague and in other cities had been founded by Reverend Dr. Norbert Czapek. Czapek originated from Radomir Meisel, 
a small village in the southern part of what was then Bohemia. He came from a poor family, and after leaving school, he trained as a tailor. But his great love was religion, religious ideas, and church communities. He was converted to the Baptist church and eventually trained as a Baptist minister. His ministerial work was successful, but under the influence of various teachers and writers, including lectures from the great preacher of the social gospel, Walter Rauschenbusch, he became more and more convinced that Christianity should have a distinctly social message, that God was to be regarded as a parent of the human family, the human Jesus was our older brother, and that our task was to create a new and better society for everyone. He also had a strong sense of the mystery of God, the him. Mother Spirit, Father Spirit, that we just sang, begins, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit, where are you? In the sky song, in the forest, sounds your cry. What to give you, what to call you, what am I? In the last verse, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit, take our hearts, take our breath, and let our voices sing our parts. Take our hands, and let us work to shape our art. As his religious ideas became increasingly liberal, he joined and became active in an international religious organization now called the International Association for Religious Freedom, founded in 1900 by Unitarians. At the 1910 Berlin Religious Freedom Congress, he met active Unitarians, including officers of the American Unitarian Association. Chapek also attended congresses in London, Copenhagen, Boston, and Oxford. He left Czechoslovakia for a while, living and working in America as a journalist. There he encountered Unitarian ideas and made contact with Unitarian headquarters. But soon he returned to his homeland. With the support of the American Unitarian Association, and later support from British Unitarians, he was able to establish a new religious movement that flourished with large congregations in an active children's program that still exists, now known as the Transylvanian Unitarian Church. Among the members of this congregation in Prague were many ex-Catholics who, reacting strongly against the Catholic faith, had come to find the traditional communion service with bread and wine unacceptable Feeling that they needed some sort of communion ceremony, Catholic turned to the native beauty of their countryside element for elements of a communion service that could be meaningful to them. The flower communion soon became one of their most significant services, and under his inspiring leadership, this new religious movement flourished in Prague and elsewhere in the country. Small of stature, Chapek was nonetheless acclaimed as one of the na nation's leading orators. He wrote more than 90 hymns, often composing the music as well as the words. When it became clear, however, that the Nazis would invade Czechoslovakia, Chapek's friends urged him to leave the country. His wide reputation as a religious liberal, his activities as a hymn writer, newspaper editor, preacher, teacher, and lecturer put him in a dangerous position. He refused to go, but his wife, Maya, left at the last moment. Chapek continued his work, which became increasingly risky. Reverend Derek Price, who's an American, takes up the story. He writes, because of the monotheistic beliefs of the Unitarians, he was able to accept into membership a number of Jews who would otherwise have been rounded up by the Gestapo. This gave them precious time in which to plan their escape from the country. When after two years this merciful plan was discovered, Dr. Charpek, along with his daughter Zora, was arrested. She for the crime of listening to the BBC on the radio and he for the same offence and for high treason. Several of his sermons were cited as evidence of the latter charge. Listening to foreign broadcasts was a capital offence under the Nazi protectorate. 
Eventually, he was sent to Dachau, concentration camp, Zora to a labour camp. Almost a year after his arrest, Chapek's name appears among prisoners sent on October 12, 1942, to Hartheim Castle near Linz, Austria, where he died of poison gas. Before his death, Dr. Chapek's courage in the face of torture and starvation was a source of inspiration to his fellow prisoners. Some of those who survived testified that the Unitarian leader could not have been sent to a place where he was needed more than Dachau. Fortified by his words and example, they held on, despite the grim agonies of the camp which was to live in history as a horrible example of Nazi bestiality. When news of Dr. Charpeck's death reached America in 1945, the then president of the American Unitarian Association, Dr. Frederick May Elliott, wrote, Another name is added to the list of heroic Unitarian martyrs by whose death our freedom has been bought. Since that time, many of the Unitarian churches, now Unitarian Universalists, in America have celebrated the Flower Communion. In 1965, Reverend Eric Price brought a version of the service and the story of Norbert Charpeck to Britain. Since then, an increasing number of their congregations have held this service annually, and we used to in this church. It is held partly for its own intrinsic beauty, partly as a symbolic expression of giving and receiving in our worship together as a congregation, and now also as a fitting memorial to Norbert Charpeck, who created this service in happier days. So, the day on which we celebrate the beauty of our world and flowers, rejoice in all we give and receive from our freedom to worship together as our hearts and minds prompt us. And at a time when we can see greater freedoms have re returned to what is now the Czech Republic and other parts of Europe, this occasion has become for us also a kind of Unitarian Saints' Day. His life of service reached its climax in great courage in the face of appalling tragedy. Well, shall we remember him in our worship as we share the beauty of a flower? Amen. So can you now join me in extinguishing the chalice and we'll read it together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. The closing words, just before he was put to death in Dachau, Dr. Charpek wrote this prayer, reflecting on his own life and the state of his spirit. It is worthwhile to live and fight courageously for sacred ideals. O oh, blow ye evil winds into my body's fire, my soul you'll never unravel. Even though disappointed a thousand times or fallen in the fight and everything would wor worthless seem, I have lived amidst eternity. Be grateful, my soul, my life was worth living. He who was pressed from all sides but remained victorious in spirit is welcomed into the choir of heroes. He who overcame the fetters giving wing to the mind is entering into the golden age of the victorious. Now Frank is going to play a poster lute, which is Isolde und Liebestod by Franz Liszt. And during the postlude, could you each please come forward and take a flower from the vase on the table and choose one that wasn't the one you brought? It'll be a flower that represents someone else, their thoughts, their feelings and associations. By exchanging flowers, we show our willingness to talk, walk together in our search for truth, disregarding all that might divide us. Each person takes home a flower brought by someone else, thus symbolising our shared celebration and community. This communion of sharing is essential to a free people of a free religion and is the whole point of the service. So please do it.